It is an identity crisis for the human family that now when I go to certain places and I say, excuse me, miss, or excuse me, sir, they say, wait a minute, don't call me miss, don't call me sir. Well, what are you? They don't want to be called male or female. They have new identities they're creating for humanity. And the children are being made to believe that this is a part of accepting the unacceptable. And what do I mean by the unacceptable? We don't accept lies to be truths. The unacceptable is we don't accept a lie to become a truth. And when I said to one lady when I was campaigning in New York to be the mayor of New York City, I said, excuse me, miss, she said, you don't call me miss. And she gave me a list of things and I said to her, listen to me, I'm 54 years old. You don't tell me who I am. I know that I was created, shaped, and fashioned to be a man. Man meaning, in the language in which we speak, the man that Allah intended for me to be. But I'm not a creature without identity. I know who I am. If you take a dog from New York City to the gateways of Mogadishu, it's still going to be a dog. If you take a lion from the beautiful jungles of Africa, and you bring that lion to America, it's still gonna be a lion, with one exception. If you take the lion as a cub, and you condition the mind of the cub to be a pet, it will look like a lion, but it will not behave like a lion. You ever go to the zoo? You ever been to the zoo and seen a lion in the cage? Yes or no? Yes. Isn't it nice? You like that, right? Yeah. Yes or no? When people see the lion in the cage, they go, wow, look at that lion. Look at him. Come here, come here. They take pictures, right? See, his captivity brings you joy, which is sad. That we as human beings find joy in an animal being enslaved and captivated in a way where he has lost his or her natural identity, we find it sport and play. But if you notice sometimes in the zoo or in a circus, the lion that they play with, you know, open your mouth, he opens his mouth, close your mouth, he closes his mouth, jump through the fire ring. Sometimes the lion has an awakening and he attacks the train and eats them and bites them and kills them. And people say, what happened to the lion? No, 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 no. Nothing happened to the lion. He had what you call recall. He remembered he's a lion. He's not a toy. He's not to be played with. The greatest tragedy in the human experience is the loss of memory and the greatest success in human experience is to have total recall of who you are as a human being let me give you an example as you get older there are different diseases like Alzheimer's disease where you can forget how to go to the bathroom and you will make, we say number two, a bowl, you will actually urinate and defecate right where you are because you lost memory that the bathroom is over there. If you live long, you can lose memory where you don't even recognize your children anymore. You can be married for 50 years and look at your husband or wife and guess what? You won't even know them anymore. It happens every day. There's so many people in the world today not only have they forgotten who they are, they don't even care to know because they're afraid to know the truth. So what I want you to do is I want you to look at a few key points. What makes us who we are is not this flesh. Our identity first is rooted in a spiritual reality that is an unseen force to the eye, but not to the soul. See, when you go to a funeral, they'll tell you, have you come to see the remains of Mr. Muhammad? Because the person that's truly, or was truly in that body, doesn't really have a name. My name is Abdul Malik, but I'm not Abdul Malik. There are many people with the name Abdul Malik. So which one of us is the real Abdul Malik? There are many people with the name Muhammad, but who's the real Muhammad? Names are given only only for classification 
but names do not provide us with anything of detail unless it is properly examined. What makes us who we are as human beings is the mindset that we have. So I can tell already what you really think by how you behave because your actions are a reflection of your thinking. I can tell whether or not you want to be great in life by the way you behave. If you're spending eight to 10 hours a day playing a video game, I already know what you're gonna become. Nothing. Because the time that you have to cultivate your mind is being wasted because you're unaware that all of the social media platforms and the technology that has been created has an addictive element to it that is beyond your control if you're not conscious of the addiction. Some people wake up in the morning, the first thing they do, they grab their phone. Before they make fajr, they grab the phone. Before they go to sleep, they grab the phone. What are they checking? Social media. Some people don't realize you are a living junkie. You are a junkie. You have an addiction. And many times we don't even realize it. So I want you to think now, as a Muslim, Islam and the nature of a Muslim is universal. No matter where we go, we're Muslims. America, Russia, Japan, China, Somalia, Ethiopia, Eritrea, Nigeria, Ghana, Gambia, the Ivory Coast, South Africa, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Kuwait, Bahrain, London, France. If we have the nature of a Muslim, we're Muslims everywhere we go. I'll give you an example. Where's the brother that was reading the Quran who led us in prayer? The Imam who led prayer, where is he? He left. Wallahi. If you pray behind him in the Kaaba in Mecca and you close your eyes and you listen to his Quran, you will never know he's from Somalia. Never. You will never know he's from Somalia. The universality of the Quran, we have young brothers and sisters from the gateways of China. If you don't see their faces and they recite Quran, you will think that they're from some other country. The best Quranic reciters in many cases are not in the Arab world. Some of the best Quranic reciters in the world are not originally from the Arab people. In fact, the success of Islam deeply depends not upon the Arab community. It depends on the entire community of Muslims all over the world. Our identity as Muslims first and foremost is spiritual. It's rooted in principles of truth. Whereupon no matter where we are, that truth is alive and well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a description in the Quran, many descriptions of the Muslim, the believer, the mu'min, the sadiq. The spiritual identity of the Muslim evolves around truth. It does not evolve around names. Some people say to me, you know, uh, what's your name? The guy says, my name is uh, John. They say, oh, John is not a Muslim name. Who told you that? Who told you John is not a Muslim name? Who told you that? That's the indoctrination. Umar ibn Khattab was Umar before he became a Muslim. His name was Umar before he became a Muslim. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq was Abu Bakr before Islam. Uthman was Uthman before Islam. Khadija was Khadija before Islam. Bilal was Bilal before the revelation of the Quran. And Muhammad was Muhammad before he received revelation of the Quran. Who told you? That those names amongst the Arab people alone are the names of Muslims. Who told you that? Because the Kuffar of Mecca, all of them were Arabs with Arabic names and spoke the Arabic language. Many of us, we have been indoctrinated with false Arab superiority, which is weakness. I love the Arab community, but when I talk to the Arabs, I remind them of one thing. Number one, most of you are not Arabs in your origin, period. You are Musta'araba. You are Arab by tongue and by experience of embracing Islam, but your language in its origin is not Arabic. Egypt is not an Arab civilization. The original people that built the pyramids have nothing to do with the Arab community at all. 
Zero. The largest Arab community in the world is in the gates of North Africa. The largest Arab community in the world is in the gates of North Africa. The majority of the Muslim world is people of color. People don't like to understand that. The majority of the people of the world are people who are Muslims, are people of all shades and color. There is no prophet that we know of at all from the gates of Europe. Every religious expression in Western society has its origins in the gates of what we call Africa. Christianity didn't begin in Rome. What they call Christianity, it didn't begin in Rome. The man they call Jesus never really existed because there's no J in Hebrew. In the Hebrew language, there is no J, period. So the name Jesus can never be a name of salvation, period. There is no J in Hebrew at all. You may say, why is that a big deal? Because once you change the name of someone, you change their identity, you disconnect people from the reality of who that individual was. Names are powerful. Why in slavery in America, why they changed our names? Why? Some of our ancestors who came to America, their names are Abdullah and Muhammad and Aisha and Fatima and Khadija. Why did the Europeans insist that we get rid of our names, our religion, our culture, our language, and our sense of identity? Why did they insist for 450 years that the black men and black women of America have no connection at all to their history and their people? Why? because it guarantees their enslavement. When you don't know your origin and your history, you have no connection to the world. You feel lost. So that's why still after 450 years in America, black young people walk around saying, yo nigga, what's up? Now the Arabs and the Pakistani and the African kids are saying, nigga, what's up? Because they're becoming lost. And if you don't hold on to Islam, you're gonna get even lost, more so than ever before, and your children from generations to come will be lost. They won't identify with Islam or with being from the Somali community. If you don't teach the knowledge of self in the masjid as a foundation of being Muslim. Because being Muslim is not necessarily being Somali. There are many Somalis that are not Muslim. Even if they have the name Muhammad, so what? There are many Arabs who are not Muslim. There are many People in America have Arabic names, they're not Muslim. So we have to rem remove the veil of the assumption of what somebody is based upon their appearance. Because appearance means nothing. I see people with kufis and thobes all the time. They're not Muslims. They just like kufis and thobes. They think it looks nice. You see a brother with a suit and tie, he says, this happens to me. I'm going with identity. Sometimes I'm in Philadelphia. And the African-American brothers they mean well. They don't mean any harm because we have not had the unique opportunity to study the majesty of the Quran. We have experience and doctrination from one generation to the other. So I can say to a brother in Philadelphia, he got his thobe on, he got his turban on, he's got his iza on from Bangladesh, a thobe made in China. He's all mixed up. I know because I was one of them. My turban wrapped like the Sudanese, my iza like the Bengali, my thobe from communist China. It's light blue, they sleep in it in Saudi Arabia, it's like pajamas, but I think I'm wearing that, I'm a Muslim, and I think I'm wearing the sunnah. I'm not nowhere in the sunnah. So when I say to a brother in a suit and tie, Salaamu Alaikum, he say, brother, you Muslim? Why not? Oh, brother, I thought you was a kafir with the suit and tie on, really? So you know kuffar by what they wear. That's why it's easy to be deceived by people who come in, dress like you dress, talk like you talk, but don't have the heart nor the convictions that you have. Don't be foolish and think you can know who's a Muslim, because you will never know who's a true Muslim. The munafiqeen blend in with the Muslims. They're hypocrites everywhere. And that's why their chastisement is the lowest of the low. You see a sister without hijab. You're not allowed to judge her and say she's not a good Muslim. How do you know? You don't know her circumstances. Maybe she's working every day to feed her family and she has no one to support her. Maybe she has eight kids. Maybe she's scared due to the propaganda that often takes place in America's media. Like CNN, which I call the Caucasian National Network, which is filled of deception. All of their coverage of Afghanistan is deception. All of it's deception. People ask me, would you like to speak about Taliban? No. 
Why would I want? Well, I don't have to speak about Taliban. What do you think about Taliban? None of your business. But I do know this. Taliban is created and supported by America. That I do know. And I know that Ronald Reagan had them in the White House as his special guest, and he said he thought they were wonderful people. Donald Trump said the other day, one thing about Taliban, he said they're great fighters. Now, if I said that, they would say I'm supporting terrorism. Anything you do in a world that is against you, standing up for truth, they label you. It's okay, I take all the labels with honors, because I know who I am, and I know the beauty of what Islam represents. So now, when I'm in Philadelphia, I say, brother, you know, why do you think I'm not Muslim? Because, brother, you dress like them Kafirs, man. Because he don't have knowledge. Clothing don't make you Muslim. Allah says in the Quran, if he were to send an angel to us, he would send an angel as a human being, wearing the clothing in which you wear. Why? Because only then can such one reach you by being like you. Now I want you to think about what I'm telling you. That is just not in the Quran. It happened. Jibril came to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once as a man. You know this, right? He came to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as a man. The Sahaba said he was a man whose hair was jet black. It didn't say jet black and silky. Jet black. Who has jet black hair? Just think. His hair was jet black. His clothing was white. None of his clothing had a sign that he was a traveler, meaning he wasn't dirty, he was spotless, he was clean. And the Sahaba said, and none of us knew who he was. SubhanAllah. See, brothers and sisters, when Allah sent the best of the best amongst us, you won't know them, but you will be judged how you treat them. That's why when people come to this masjid and you don't know them, you better treat them well, because this is not your house. This is not the Somali community's masjid. You are Somalis, but this is Allah's house. And everybody that walks in here is a guest of Allah. You treat them with love, dignity, and respect. And you make sure they feel comfortable in coming into the house of Allah. Because it's not your house. It's Allah's house. And we are his guests, and you are the custodians. And you are those that have been entrusted with the ability to receive the guests of Allah. And that is such an honor. But let's go back to Jibreel. He asked Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what is Islam? See, here's the identity of the Muslim now being established. This is the identity of the Muslim. He said, what is Islam? He said to the Prophet, kalimatu shahada ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Muhammad rasulullah That is a unique declaration of faith that is exclusive to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is one of the unique things about Islam. There is no other religious expression on the planet that has a shahada as a declaration of faith to enter into Islam. Umar, Uthman, Abu Bakr, Sadiq, Bilal, all of them, Khadija, all of them became one in spirit because of the declaration of faith. How come I get a chance to know Somalis, Palestinians, Moroccans, Egyptians, I can go any place in the world where there are Muslims and I will find my brothers and sisters. Why? Islam. Wallahi, in Saudi Arabia, when I went to Mecca, I was only 15 years old. I probably weighed 90 pounds by myself. I trusted in Allah and Allah alone. I made Hajj and I decided to stay in Mecca with no place to stay. No money, no housing, no family, no Arabic, nothing except my faith was in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Rabbul Alameen. Alladhi yudabburu amra min as ila al-ard. When I was a kid, my heart was so close, believing and trusting in Allah, that what you call the impossible, I knew was possible. I was living in the haram, making tawaf, and I met wonderful Muslims from all over. Some Somalian students took me to their room, and for the first time I seen Africans eating spaghetti. I said, what is this? And then I remembered they eat spaghetti because the Italians tried to colonize and conquer Somalia. But the Somalis, of course, you make better spaghetti than the Italians now. But then in Mecca, I used to sleep in the haram. The haram is open 24 hours. When they close, when they get ready to clean up the haram, they roll up all the big rugs and they put them in the corners. I used to go in between the rug and hide and go to sleep. 
And then I would hear the adhan, faqiyam al layl and get up, go make wudu, take my thobe, wash it out, hang it up, and put on another thobe, take that one into the dry cleaners and get it pressed. And I met Muslims, wallahi, I met Muslims who took me to their house, wallahi, I, to this day, I did not know all of their names. They said, brother, you're Muslim from America, what are you doing? I told them what I was trying to do, they said, brother, you can't stand the haram, let's go, home with me. Wallahi, I was sleeping in Brother Ali Humasani's house. I woke up in the middle of the night. I said, how am I in this man's house? I met his children, I met everybody. I'm in a mansion and I don't even know this man. And America, the white press, has made the black man and woman image around the world of one, of a thief, a pimp, a whore, everything but a civilized creature. Yet, I met Muslims who trusted in Allah and took me in as though I was one of their own. La ilaha illallah. I had a brother named uh, Baharath on the company Bakhshan. He used to give me a check every month for two months to study Islam. He said, this check is for you. I don't want you working in Saudi Arabia. I want you to study each and every day and graduate, but one condition, go back to America. Help Islam in America because we don't need you in Saudi Arabia. But I will definitely help you and support you and pay for your education experience. So America can't tell me about the Arabs being evil or the Arabs being terrorists. That doesn't work on me because I know many great Arabs. And I don't respect them because they're Arabs, but I don't hate them because they're Arabs. But I love the Muslims no matter where they are. That's Islam. Any Muslim is my brother or sister. So our foundation of being Muslim is our Shahada first. La ilaha illallah, Muhammad al-Rasulullah. Then Jibril told him, about the prayers, five prayers. Now I want you to listen to me very carefully. The identity of a Muslim is five prayers. Don't fall into this trap of, oh, I'm a modern Muslim, but I don't pray. I'm a modern Muslim, but I don't do Ramadan. I'm a modern Muslim, but I really don't do Hajj. I'm a modern Muslim, but I really don't believe in, you know, modesty and marriage. You're not a Muslim if you don't practice the pillars of Islam. You're not Muslim if you do not practice the fundamental principles of Islam, you don't come into Islam and make up your own rules. This deen of Allah is already completed. Either you accept it as it is or go your way because Allah, he don't need you. It's the reverse. You need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah has already defined for us what Islam is. You know, Wallahi, I saw this. They had a hearing in the Congress. Wallahi, you can Google it. In the Congress, they had a hearing. They said in the hearing that they had agreed with Saudi Arabia to take all of the books being taught to the children and remove certain things from the text, and they're creating new imams to come to America to teach Islam, a moderate version of what it means to be Muslim. What they mean is they want a Muslim community that does not stand up for truth and is not in opposition to oppression. They want Muslims to go, you know, brother, they just killed two million people in Baghdad. Mashallah, brother, they must have did something. They just invaded Somalia, oh, they must have did something. They want weak Islam. Apologist Muslims. Muslims that are ashamed of being Muslim. I go to the khutbahs in some cities and brothers will tell me, brother, you know, please, when you give your speech, don't say anything about Palestine. Please don't. I said, brother, let me tell you something. For what my ancestors have gone through in this country, don't you ever tell me what to say. I'm free. I say what I want to say, where I want to say it, and I'm prepared to pay the price for my own convictions because Islam saved my life. I'm not trying to be accepted by the establishment. I care nothing about governmental institutions and what they represent when they are killers and shedders of the blood of the innocent people all over the world and they are warmongers and makers of war. I'm not trying to be friends with them. They don't love Islam. They don't respect Muslims. I don't care if they say to you in Ramadan, Ramadan Mubarak, Eid Kareem. You know, I was looking at the Muslims, they go to the White House for iftar, right? After they bomb and kill millions of Muslims, the Muslim leaders in America are fighting to be guests in the White House. SubhanAllah. What kind of Muslims are these? You go sit with people that are killing Muslims wholesale. Why? You think the Jews would sit with Hitler? Some people ask, why are the Jews in America the way they are? You should study their history. Know the suffering they've experienced 
and the power they understand of their unity and they're willing to sacrifice all that they have for their people. They will do what they gotta do for their people. The question is, will you do what you gotta do for your people? Allah says in the Quran, in establishing the identity of the Muslim, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Qul inna salati wa nusuki wa mahyaya wa mamati lillahi rabbil alameen la sharika lahu wa bithalika umirtu wa ana awl al-muslimin. Allah says, Qul inna salati, say my prayers, my sacrifice, my life and my death, all of it is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of the worlds, and I have been commanded to be of those who bow down. That's our identity, Islam, Muslim. Are we American Muslims or Muslim Americans? Either way you can say, yes. We are part of the majestic experience of the American democracy, but we want Muslim American experience to be unique and a contribution to the fabric of America as a whole. But we're not trying to blend in to the point that we disappear. They call it a melting pot, stay out of that pot. If you ever seen anything thawed in a pot and it melts, all of it gets lost. You have to know who you are. I had a brother come to me earlier from here, the masjid. He said, brother, you know, I was taking my kids to school and my daughter said, dad, stay in the car, stay in the car. You know, don't, you know, stay in the car. Because they don't want their friends to see that their parents are foreigners. They don't want them to hear your accent. They don't want to see the way you dress. They don't want them to see that maybe you're working hard to take care of your children, but you drive a raggedy car, but you have given them a beautiful home. They have made children feel ashamed of their parents who are foreigners. Why? Because a lack of understanding of the beauty of identity. Wallahi, when I was campaigning in New York for the mayor's office, and I'll share the pictures with you, I went to the Jewish community. I set up my table and my sound system. The police came. I went to the Jewish community in front of their synagogue. I went with two or three brothers. The police came, what's going on? I know what they're trying to do. I told the brothers with me, you tell them these words. I will not move. This is my land. This is my country. And I will not move as I campaign. And I will not be intimidated. So if I'm gonna move, I'm going to jail, but I will not move off this corner. So the brother went, he talked to them. He came back, he said, brother, they said it's okay. I used my microphone. And I was right in front of the synagogue as they was coming out. And I told him, come here, I wanna to talk to all of you about the majesty and the nobility of our common humanity and the shared destiny that we cannot escape. Wallahi, the Jews came over, they signed my petition, the women came over, the children came over. When I finished at sunset, the young people was lined up outside. They wanted me to autograph my poster for them. Wallahi, wallahi, the Jewish community treated me better than the Muslims on my campaign. The Muslims in New York, they were working behind me against me, against me. I would never expect that. And some of them, I raised millions of dollars for them, millions. But because of the jealousy and insecurity and the fear, they said, no, brother. Abdul Malik running for the mayor of New York? Oh, no, brother. We don't want to shake the boat like that. Why not? A Muslim could be the mayor of New York. There's a million Muslims living in New York City, but they don't have unity. They don't have identity. They have money. Money means nothing if you don't have knowledge. In this city, there's enough Somalians. You can elect the next mayor and the governor and the senators and the members of Congress right here. Minnesota proved it to you. You elected Ilhan Omar. They scared of Ilhan. Wallahi, say what you want. Ilhan is a brave woman, mashallah. She may not be perfect, and none of us are, but you need to love her and pray for her. Love her and pray for her. Ilhan has the courage that most imams in America don't have to speak truth to power where there's wickedness and corruption. May Allah bless her for what she has done and what she can do. I don't agree with everything she says, but she's in a different body of politics, and I understand that. So the Quran gives you identity. Number one, as a Muslim, is to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To believe in all of his prophets, his books, his angels. To believe in resurrection. To believe in qadr. That all things are already ordained. Nothing to be afraid of. Whatever it's going to be, it's going to be. The identity of the Muslim deals with character. Faith and convictions and character. 
the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was described, his identity was described once by Aisha radiallahu anha. She said, Kana khuduquhu al-Qur'an. She said, Prophet Muhammad, he was the embodiment of the Qur'an. He was living the Qur'an. You know why we don't reach a lot of young people with Islam in America? You want to know why? We don't show them a good example of what it means to be a strong Muslim. Being Muslim is not sitting in the masjid reading the Quran waiting to die. Some of the masjids, you go inside, they want the youth to come and sit down and read Quran all day and, and read hadith all day. And what are you talking about? We have work to do. Islam is about building civilizations. Islam is about the pursuit of knowledge. Islam is about human excellence. The Prophet himself helped build the masjid in Medina. Islam was all over the world because Muslims understood the calling that was upon them and the destiny that was before them and they became the masters of their own fate by Allah's permission. Islam is not just sitting in the masjid making prayer. Young people are not going to accept that in this day and time. But if you give them purpose and discipline and find within the young people what are their dreams and their aspirations and feed the greatness that's within them, the masjid would flourish. There is no future without the youth. And there is no future for Islam without women and girls being empowered. None. You will never be successful if the women are ignorant. There is no success. Because the first teacher is a woman. Your first teacher is your mother. Your first doctor is your mother. The first time you get a kiss is going to be from your mom. If you fall, your mom is the first person to pick you up. But when you don't know the sacredness of your mother, you disrespect her. Some of you young people right now, your mother say, Muhammad, come here, Aisha, come here, do me a favor. Can you please get the bags out of the car, put it upstairs, and then I need you to wash the dishes. What do you say? I don't got to do that. We're not back home in Somalia. It's America. I'm free. Do it yourself. You mean to tell me, you little snotty nose, that this woman gave birth to you, cleaned your stinking behind, wiped your snotty nose, gave you food, clothing, and shelter, sacrificed her life. Your mother could have died giving you birth and you have the audacity to talk back to her. That's because you don't have the identity of the Muslim. Because a Muslim knows, Allah says in the Quran, when it comes to your parents, don't say oof to them, nothing. You should be happy to serve your mothers and fathers. Your mother tell you to do something, Wallahi, do it quickly. Steal the blessing, steal it. That's the identity of the Muslim child. To honor, to love, to respect. The identity of a Muslim is to be one of faith, strong conviction. A Muslim is a strong believer in time. You can achieve anything you want in this country if you believe first and trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some people ask me in New York, do you really think you can be the mayor? Of course. Becoming the mayor of New York, that's a small achievement. That's no big deal. I can become the president of the United States of America if it's Allah's will. All you have to do is reach into the hearts and minds of the American people and bring solutions to the table that's good for all people. I wasn't trying to be the mayor for Muslims. I was trying to be the mayor as a Muslim, but for the goodwill of all people of New York City. And wallahi, when I campaigned, you know who people would sign my petition? I told you there's a million Muslims in New York. 99.9% .9 of my signatures, all from the non-Muslim people. The non-Muslims in America are beautiful people. They just don't know Islam. How many non-Muslims have you brought into the masjid? How many? How many non-Muslims have you given shahada to? How many of your neighbors do you sit down with them and say, hey, listen, how can I help you? I can cut the grass, I can pick up your medication, I can take you shopping. Everybody don't have to accept Islam for us to serve them. But the identity of a Muslim is to be one of good for all people. I'm for justice for everybody. For Jews, for Christians, for blacks, for whites, for the rich, for the poor. Why? The Quran says so. What does the Quran say? Stand up for justice, even if it's against yourself. That's Islam. We stand up for justice, even if it's against ourselves. Why? Because part of being a Muslim is being truthful. You see, the identity of a Muslim is built on spiritual principles. That if we don't learn those principles, we will only be Muslims, culturally speaking. Culturally Muslims. I had a teacher named Akbar, may Allah be pleased with him. He said to me, you know, the majority of the Muslim world, they're culturally Muslims. They don't know Islam. They don't know. 
I met Muslims that are born in Islam. I was at United Nations. And I was in a brother's house who works at the UN as a diplomat. I asked him which way is the Qibla, because Maghrib prayer was coming in. He gave me the West to pray. His wife became very angry. She said, brother, the Qibla is not that way. It's this way. That told me, as a Muslim diplomat from the world of Islam, he never prayed in his house. He didn't even know the direction of the Qibla. His wife was shamed by that. She said, Brother Abdul Malik, the Qibla is this way, my brother. So not only did he never ever pray in his house, he never prayed with his wife and he never saw her pray, but she knew the Qibla. You cannot be successful as Muslims in the absence of holding on to the Quran and the Sunnah. You know why the non-Muslims do the world of Islam the way they do? Because they don't practice Islam. Why is it a country can invade the Muslim world and kill two million Muslims? Because Muslims help them do the killing. They land the planes, they refuel the jets, they do the translation, they help them map everything out. You will never defeat Muslims without hypocrites in the Muslim rank helping you. You can't. 1.5 billion Muslims in the world. What would happen if we woke up one day and realized our potential? We don't have to fight. We will fight if we have to. That may scare some of you. I got five daughters, two sons. I will never allow someone in America to take my daughter's hijabs off and beat them and drag them in the street and come in the masjid and say, inshallah, we make dua. Mm -mm, that's not me. If you're a real Muslim man, you're a real Muslim son, you stand on God for the women of your community. Some brothers are so scared after 9-11 they would drop their wives off at the mall and park the car and tell their wives and daughters with hijab, go ahead in front of me, I'll wait for you. Scared. Why would you jeopardize the safety of women and not be on the pulse to secure their safety and their well-being? It's better to die defending your family than to die the death of a coward hiding behind false religious doctrine and interpretation. A person said to me, you know, Islam is so violent. I said, what do you mean by that? Well, Muslims believe in fighting. So what do you want us to do? I said, you think Muslims are violent? Okay. You ready for the mathematics? What if you can do it while I'm talking? I want you to Google what is the budget of the United States Pentagon, United States military. Find out how much they spend on weapons. Remember, bullets are not made to be candy. Every bullet is made to shoot and kill. I speak to the police all the time. I said, why don't you shoot the guy in the leg? They said, that's not our training. We're taught to shoot, to kill. I said, why? Tamir Rice in Cleveland, Ohio had a play gun. They shot that kid for nothing. One reason though, he's a black kid. He's gotta have a real gun, he's a black kid. Ah, that's a black kid. I have to tell you this, you may not like it. America is a racist country without a soul. These are not Christians. These are not the people of America. The leaders of America are a soulless, heartless people. They will kill not only foreigners, they will starve the American people to death in the pursuit of power and destruction. Flint, Michigan, black children drinking poisoned water, contaminated. They didn't have money to help them, but they got money for bombs. When they see you, what do you think they see? You think they just see a Somali community? No, they see black people. How do you want to be seen? Just as black people, Somalis? Or do you want to be seen for the greatness that you truly represent? If you trust in Allah, as I conclude, your greatest identity will be revealed unto you. Your best identity is to be Muslim, unapologetically. A servant of Allah being used by the Creator to do good for all people. I love the American people because I am the American people and so are you. But the government's policies towards the wars or the world of Islam is wicked. They want me to cheer on that they're saving 89,000 people from Afghanistan. Ah, oh, really. Let's open up the books. How many did you kill? Two million? We forget about that so easy. That's why I love the Jewish community 
they refuse to forget those who hurt their people. They don't forget and they study it all the time. They study it all the time. I told all the Muslims in America who have Islamic schools, why you don't teach the history of the African American experience in your school? Why you don't teach it? You want to study about all the lives of Sahaba, all the lives of all the great scholars of Islam, you don't want to study the life of the people and the struggle of a people that you are benefiting off of their sacrifice and their suffering and you are destined to have the same experience if you don't awaken to the reality. You don't want to study that history. You better study the history because if you don't, you're next. Some of you right now, some of the young brothers, I can't believe it when I'm coming sometimes, they tell me Somali youth have gangs. How could you have a gang? What you got a gang for? Somali youth are shooting each other. Somali youth are into drugs. What are you doing that for? Because you don't have direction. You don't know who you are. You don't know the greatness of your culture and your people. You don't know the greatness of Islam. You're lost because the elders have found chasing money more important than committing to you. I say to the elders that are here, what you don't like in the children is a direct reflection of your own neglect and your indifference. If you want young people to experience greatness in this country, you must prepare them for greatness and all the opportunities that are before them. You should all make sure you either open up businesses or you go to college and universities and just don't study anything. Study the sciences, study technology, study business and finance, study medicine, study agriculture, buy land, build your communities all across the land of the state of Ohio. Learn where you are. You have a great chance. You see, the, you see what you have here and all the stores you have? You can't find one African American community in Cleveland, Ohio, or Columbus that has as many stores as you have and have as strong of a family time that you have. You know why? Because our enemy destroyed all of that. And if you're not careful and you don't get involved, what they did to us, they're gonna do it to your children. It's simple as that. I saw a group of young kids today. You were with me, right, brother? You too? I saw two white kids in the mall walking with their pants down, with the buckle unloose and showing their underwear. I said, brother, look at this. <laughs> look at these kids. I said, if you don't look at their faces and know they were white, you would think they were black kids from the ghetto who lost their way. So I want to conclude with this so I don't take too much of the time that's given. I want to make an appeal to you, number one. I want you to weaponize your mind. I want you to study the Quran, the life of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and study global history. All history begins with geography. Study. Study the diversity of the human family. How many languages do you think are spoken in the world? You young man. Yes. Take a guess. You won't be wrong. What's your guess? One language in the whole world? How many languages you speak? How many? Two. He's shot. How many languages you think we speak in the world? Spoken languages. 40 or 50. Good try. Huh? 120, 125? 50? 50? Sisters? Well, you ready for this? There's about 7,000 languages spoken all over the world. So you will die, you will die. You, listen to me very carefully. I'm gonna show you the level of ignorance of the human beings that think that they can be the creator of the worlds and know like Allah knows. You will die not knowing how to communicate with 99.99.99% of the people on the planet you will die never being able to speak to them orally. But spiritually, you can communicate with the Muslims no matter where you go. Muslims who love Islam, they find a way to talk to you, even if they can't speak your language. How many nations do you think are on the planet Earth? Nations. Yes. 51? 65? 100? 200. See? I want you to research. If there's 7,000 languages, how could there only be 50 nations? Do the math. 
See, Muslims used to be mathematicians. I want you to research. I'm telling you because I want you to think outside the box. The educational institutions you go to are schools that teach you absolutely nothing. They're there to program you and indoctrinate you and to brainwash you. You must come out of the box because your mind has been frozen. You must read and study and read and study beyond what the schools give you because they will never give you the knowledge that will liberate you from their control. School is in the business of indoctrination at the command of the government. Study, read. How many tribes in Somalia? I'm asking one of the elders now. How many potential tribes in Somalia? Yes. I'm looking for one of the older people. How many tribes in Somali? Five or six major tribes? How many languages are spoken in Somalia? Four or five languages, right? No? One, two? Okay. Just one? Okay. Okay. Now, look, look. We have a little confusion, which means two. Which means I'm going to do my own research. Who are the number one neighbors of Somali? I'm asking one of the Somali kids. I don't want no adults. What countries are closest to Somali on the map? Kenya. Kenya. Who else? Ethiopia. Ethiopia. Who else? Kenya. Kenya has already said. Ethiopia has said. France, right? Isn't France close as a neighbor? Yes or no? Wallahi, you know what? I asked two, I asked a group of Muslim kids, is the Kaaba in London or France? They told me France. I said, La ilaha illallah Muhammad <laughs> No, this is real. We don't teach knowledge of self. We don't do it. We have to get into the knowledge of self. Because the more you understand the majesty, listen up, listen up. The more you understand the majesty of your own creation, the more you're going to understand the beauty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, Allah, He tells us in the Quran to look within ourselves, to study. I give you one example, the loss of identity. Why would a black person buy the cream that's poison and causes cancer, called light and lovely, put it on their skin to get rid of the dark skin? Why would a black person do that? Why? Yes. Say it. They don't want no dark skin on them. Exactly. Why? Take the mask down so I can hear you. People make them feel sad about who they are. Yes. Shamed of themselves. Come on. Yes. Come on. Yes. Insecurity. What else? Huh? Scared of the racist, stupid people. Yes. Come on, talk to me. Take that mask off. When they get killed? They may get killed. That could happen in America for sure, yes. Getting upset at themselves? Getting upset at themselves, yes. Say it again? Discrimination, Discrimination. yes. Low self-esteem. Low self-esteem, yes. They don't have their culture. They're scared of their culture. They're scared of the culture, yes. Huh? Woo! What wisdom has been spoken? Losing their identity to racist people. Can I tell you this? Listen to me very carefully. Racism is the mind of a devil. 100% devil. And I'm going to prove it to you. When Allah created Adam, what did Shaitan say? I'm better than he. Why? He said, you made me from? Fire. Fire. And you made him from? Fire. So whenever you see racist people, I don't care what color they are. Whenever you deal with racist people, you're dealing with the mind of Satan. And you have to know how to handle Satan wisely. Because if you don't, you will become the very thing that you hate. I told the people I was talking to, and I'm gonna end on this point, I know my time is up. I told the people one time, and they say America's constitution is so beautiful. I say, really, really. For 450 years, we're still talking about black and white in America. You see all the signs, Black Lives Matter? You see it? You know what my grandson said when he saw that sign? He said, what is this stupid sign for? No, I want to show you the mind of a kid. He said, who made this stupid sign? 
I said, what do you mean? He says, it's a stupid sign, Black Lives Matter. Of course Black Lives Matter, who doesn't know it? Now, he didn't grow up in America. He's been living in, in Riyadh with his mother and father in Saudi Arabia, so he don't know, right? He, as a kid, thought this has to be insane. He hasn't had the experience yet. Why after 450 years, we have to say Black Lives Matter? If this is a great democracy, if it's the land of freedom, justice, and equality, then why is race even an issue on all the governmental papers that ask you for your race? Because it's not a land of the free. It's not the home of the brave. It's not the land of endless opportunities, freedom, justice, and equality. It's not make America great again. It's make America white again. That's what they want. But that, that time is over. That's over. White supremacy is on its deathbed, I promise you. It's gone. They're trying to hold on. It's over. Now, what did Islam do for us? 1,400 and how many years ago was the Quran revealed? How many years? 1,400 and? 43. 43. 1,400. I'm writing it down. 1,400. 43. How many generations is that? How many? Six. What is a generation by time? What is a generation? I can't hear you. Sixty? How many years make a generation? Hundred? A hundred years is a century. How many years make a, make a generation? No, one hundred is a century, yes. Fifty? Okay. So look, 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 we have different numbers. I want you to Google right now, how many years make a generation? Yes. 18, mashallah. Yes. 25, okay. Google right now, somebody, Google for me, how many years make a generation? Yes, in the back. 10 years for a generation, okay. About 23 years? Huh? 20 to 30. 20 to 30. Good. Look, look, listen up, quiet. Young men in the corner on the wall, I want you to be quiet. I know my time is up, but this is important. This is an important last lesson I'm going to give you. I want you to use some math. If we use 30, 30 divided by or divide 1,443 by 30. Do it quickly. Somebody do the math. What? What do you I want you to divide 1,443. What is it? 48.1. Y'all ready for this? So, we have lost in America 48 generations to the ignorance of racism, bigotry, hatred. And Islam gave them a solution 48 generations ago. You ready for it? Write it in the Quran. Allah says in the Quran, Bismillah ar-Rahim. Ya ayyuhan nas, inna khalaqnakum min dhakarin wa untha, wa ja'annakum shu'uban wa qaba'ila li ta'arafu, inna akramakum inda Allahi atqaakum. That's it. Allah says, O oh people, O oh people, we have made you from one single essence, male and female. Mother and father. We have made you into nations and into tribes. Why? Lita'arafu. That you may know yourself and get to know one another. And he says the best of you in the eyes of Allah is the one that is most righteous. Now look, Allah give us wisdom. He said the best of you because we all want to be number one. How many brothers have children here? Raise your hand. If you have more than one child, sometimes a kid will come to you and say, Daddy, do you love me more than Muhammad? You have to say, of course I love you more, I love you. Then you go, Muhammad Ahmed comes, do you love me more than Muhammad? You have to say, oh, I love you. Aisha comes, do you love me more than you love the boys? Baby, I love you. We all want to be number one. But if you want to be number one, be number one with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Forget about people making you number one. Be number one with Allah. And if Allah bless you and love you, he will bring the best of people around you. I leave you with this. This is my plea to you. In order not to lose your identity, study the Quran and the majesty of the genealogy of the righteous. Noah had a son that was rebellious. And Allah said to Noah, 
this one is not of your family. Even though biologically he is his son, Allah said, no, he is not of your family. Our family is spiritual in nature, rooted in principles of truth, committed to levels of faith and conviction that are unshakable because we trust in Allah for all that we do. My appeal to you is simple. I can't give you a lecture in one night that will sum up the totality of your own existence and the majesty of your being. You are like the butterfly that was once a caterpillar. If you study yourself and allow yourself to evolve and develop your mind over a period of time, you will have the awakening of the beauty of who you are and you'll know what Allah intended for you to be. Be yourself. Don't ever try to be anyone else. Be yourself. You know that's the challenge for Muslim women? All the magazines, the non-Muslims, they attack the Muslim women, they shake their faith, and then they lose their way. Why? Because they shake their convictions. Why? Because they don't know Islam well enough. We teach, oh, wear the hijab, this is haram, that's haram. Okay, hijab, no problem. But study Islam. Put something on your head, but for heaven's sake, put something in your head. Because once you learn the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet, you can defend hijab like this. Three seconds. Anything in the Quran they ask me, easy answer for them. Easy. Easy answer, easy. One woman said to me, you know, I will become Muslim, but you can have all these four wives. I said, lady, sit down. Let me ask you a question. She said, what? I said, why do four women want the same man? She said, whoa, what are you saying? Yeah, four women want the same man. There are women that are open to polygamy, easy. In America, you can have one wife, but you have a hundred girlfriends, it's legal. If you don't believe me, ask Bill Clinton. He had Hillary and Monica in the same house, the White House. No, it's, the, it's what they do. I don't let nobody tell me about Islam and Islam is oppressive to women. Do you see this culture? They got women getting boobs implants, buttocks implants, face implants, mink, uh, what you call it, mink eyelashes, weaves, taking all kind of medication. They got a pill for fatness, a pill for losing weight. They got a drink to put you to sleep, a pill to wake you up. They have destroyed the women of this culture. They won't let them be their natural selves. The same thing for the men. They got men popping pills at 20 years old. I'm gonna take this pill. Man, this pill can do something for me. It will do nothing for you but destroy you. So have a great night. I hope I'll see you again. I love you. But I want you to trust in Allah and believe in the majesty of Islam and know that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is a loving, kind human being a reflection of the true essence of human excellence and devoted. He's devoted, devoted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a noble servant. And you can do no better than that. The greatest thing you could ever become is a true servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Serve Allah with your life and then pursue your greatest goals. Weaponize your mind. Weaponize your mind. Weaponize your mind. May Allah bless you. I thank you for your time. Assalamu alaikum. Takbir. We don't have to clap. Takbir. 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 I want you to take the pledge. You ready for the pledge? I will be myself. Say it. I will be myself by the help and grace of Allah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Assalamu alaikum.